sign up for this. And so you have to, you have to go out, you know, you have to take it to businesses. We took it to like local music stores, um, to record shops, to vintage shops, to coffee shops, to restaurants, to, um, ice cream parlors, to anywhere that we, you know, campus to anywhere that we could, we took, we, you know, we took those posters and we're like, Hey, if you know anybody in a band, tell them to sign up. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Successfully Unsigned. I am one of your co-hosts, Dale Shack, and this week's episode is one that is really special to me. It's about Battle of the Bands. Uh, I got the opportunity at the Washington Theater to produce this event for three years, and the other guys, Patrick and David, both wanted to talk about it on the show, how the show is produced, what, is it, what does it look like to organize an event as big as, as a Battle of the Bands, how has it grown over the last couple years, you know, just talking about all the little things of show promotion that go into an event like this. And it was, it was really cool to kind of get to sit down and just kind of talk it out and discuss, you know, ideas. And hopefully if you take a listen to this and are interested in show promotion and organizing events, that you get a little something out of it and a better understanding of how to promote the show, get the show out there, get people to come to the show, and maybe even some other little tips and tricks along the way that make things run smoother. Also in this show, we talk a little bit about the Murfreesboro music scene, since that's where the Battle of the Bands took place. It was the Murfreesboro Battle of the Bands. And so we talk about a little bit of some of the bands, what that scene there looks like, you know, uh, mention a couple of the house venues and talk about the differences between playing at a house venue and playing in a larger event. And finally, in the last segment of the episode, we talk about all of the issues that are going on right now between Universal Music Group and TikTok. And what does that look like as an artist? How can you capitalize on this? And how does it affect smaller artists that are signed to Universal? As always, we hope you enjoy this episode. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe on YouTube and rate our show on your favorite platform and let us know what platform that is in the comments or by hitting us up on Instagram at successfully unsigned. Injury on set. Injury on set. Oh, we have 2319. We got a 2319. You know, for all you watching out there, this episode is special because we are starting at first blood. We're here to fight. And and David lost. He drew first blood, but on himself. Oh, so he's disqualified. I, I was like, where's this going? Is this Braveheart? Patrick, I've never heard that. it's you and me. <laughs> <laughs> you got some claws, man. <laughs> I literally just cut my nails today, actually. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I was, guys, I was just playing with a lighter, like a little, what is it called? It's called a lighter. A lighter. It's not, it's a lighter, but it's a gooseneck lighter. Yeah. Like a, it, not like a, it's like a candle lighter, a candle lighter. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I don't know. I just chopped half my finger off and it just started bleeding profusely. Okay, so that's a little dramatic. You, you should have come well, up with some cor- like cool sorry, story. A like, of my finger. you know, you played guitar until your fingers bled. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to go with a basic one, mm-hmm. you should have had something Charlie much cooler Charlie bit your there. finger. Yeah, you should have seen the pizza guy. A when, child like, bit your finger? Charlie bit his oh. finger. It's like a 2008 well, reference. Oh, Which Charlie the Magical is, Unicorn. Oh, that's true. It's very, very... No, not Charlie the Unicorn. No? It's a hmm. separate Charlie. Oh, you oh, bit oh, my oh, finger. oh, I know yeah. what you're talking about. The, very relevant, because we'll be mm. talking about early YouTube today if you uh, see my shirt. Oh, boy. Can't be real. I didn't even know he had like <laughs> merch like that. But. Oh, I have a lot I need to he say. He was prepared. Oh, boy. Patrick always has a lot to say. So do you. I'm sure there's some drama. I never do. Too. I never talk. Wasn't there some drama? We'll get to it. But welcome, guys, to the show. Uh, this, is, this is Successfully Unsigned. We are your hosts. What is my name? DJ Overheat. DJ Overheat. I never say my own name. Okay. What's my name? DJ I kind Overheat. of forget yours is DJ Overheat. What's too. my name? DJ Overheat. D Shack. Patty G. Mm-hmm. And we have a special episode planned for you today because. It's a normal episode. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> because, you get two back-to-back normal episodes to start the season. If mm-hmm. you are a Dale hater, go ahead and shut this off because he's go gonna away. be the one talking for most oh of this. Oh boy! So y'all lock in, mm-hmm. get your snacks ready. Yeah, he's about to be yapping. This a is lot. a one to like put on when you're like <laughs> falling asleep. Put it on. Yeah, at, you know, while you're drinking your tea or you you know. Let me get my NPR voice. Oh, yeah, there you go. So wow. That was actually now. pretty good. Tonight, really good. unsuccessfully unsigned, we would like to go into the inner depths and deep working of 
the Battle of the Bands. Why that's is that really your calling? Good. That's your calling. You need to do that. Drop <laughs> I, would, I would love to. I would love to. Dude. Yeah, you have a voice for that. You, sh- you, you should be very like, easily could with all your connections. Like an audiobook voice or something. Yeah. I actually know a guy who used to read for NPR. Oh. Yeah. There's your in. Yeah. Yeah, literally. Yes or yes. Yeah. Also, does he need a radio host or anything? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> what are we talking about tonight, guys? Because there's a lot to get into. Well, are, are we going to tease the subject, I guess, first? Let's tease it. Okay. Well, Dale, you tease it. it. You're the one who's talking about it. The 2024 Murfreesboro Battle of the Bands went down on February 3rd. It is the third annual okay. event. Okay. All right. And That's we'll talk more about, about it That's later. That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> but first, show and yell. We have to remember to actually yell this time. Yeah, I'll, I'll yell. I think only one of us did. That was me. Who's going first? Uh, I, I guess I'll go first. <clears throat> Polar bear! Irrational polar bear. <laughs> Irrational polar bear. Um, so Patrick actually gifted me this last year at our Christmas party. And it's a nice little ornament, but... 2022. 2022. So it was almost, two years A ago. little over a year ago. Yeah. But it wasn't, mm-hmm. yeah, not quite two years. My bad. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little ornament. It, uh, I don't know, I was, I was like cleaning my closet the other day and I found it and I was like... This needs to become like something that just chills on a shelf. Like it doesn't have to be on a tree. Well, you know, yeah, I told yeah. you when we were, I was helping you decorate for Christmas this year. I said, if you found like some little polar bear stuff, it'd be really cool if you did a little polar bear scene. Cause David loves polar bears. I called, I said irrational polar bear. Cause that's his Instagram handle. Mm, um, I do love oh, polar bears. Sorry. You can bleep that out if you don't want the stalkers following you. Oh my God. But stalkers, <laughs> be honest. But mm. yeah. Uh, so I got that for his birthday and then I also got him chocolate milk. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, it's like the perfect pairing. Dude, I saw so. the chocolate. Uh, well, not not the same chocolate. At least I, I hope, hope not, not the same. I hope not from a year and a half ago. But I saw the nice big jug of like Fairlife chocolate milk down in your fridge. And dude, let me tell you, I almost brought that up here because I <laughs> love that stuff. That's all my roommate, dude. That's all my roommate. He's like lactose oh, intolerant, so he has to have dude, like the light stuff. But it's lactose. The the, it's the so the, good. The Fair life is so good. It's so good. So thick and creamy, like, yeah, bro. Yeah, sponsor is Fair Life. Uh, Fair <laughs> yes, Life. we gave you a free one. That's the first one. The next one is going to cost you double. Mm-hmm. But anyways, Fair yeah, life. I like just having this. Um, I don't know. Just like I'm gonna think I'm just gonna put it on my shelf or something, or put it somewhere where I can see it because it just it's so majestic, you know. It is really cute. Polar yeah. bears, and it just like feels nice. But I've always been afraid my dogs are gonna get it because as I was cleaning out the tub, my my lab put his head in the thing and, and like got this out and started walking away with it. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. not this. <laughs> so maybe you can just set it up really high. Somewhere. I'm going to set it up really high, but Hang it on um, the ceiling fan and let it. Oh yeah. Oh, potato oh, like a gremlin. You know? my room before you came. Y'all remember that vine? No. Mm-hmm. That was one of my favorite vines. It's literally a potato on a string mm-hmm. on a fan. And it's just, a potato flew around my room before. We're talking all the, about the, internet the culture millennial, today. The millennial <laughs> moment has come. Okay. Um, look, that vine is iconic. And yeah, it's still funny to this yeah. day. I, I honestly think you would really like it. I Do you I even know I, what vine is? Oh, yes, no. I know what okay. vine is. And I'm pretty sure I've seen <laughs> so like a screenshot there for a of second. that. I'm pretty sure I've seen a screenshot. I, of, of, you of have to, have. It's but I, so I I don't remember actually seeing it. We I used to have a segment where we bring our favorite vines. I used to, to really want, like a lot of vines. You probably, well, you and I, I probably don't like the same ones. No, I'm sure we did not. <laughs> there's there's a lot. I I'm on YouTube a lot, so there's like mm. fine compilations on there. I'll watch and just be like, this is it. This is where it started. You know, who's your yeah. favorite YouTuber? Favorite YouTuber is Cody Cobb. Oh, okay, okay. You know what? I've never watched Early him. Cody Co. was so funny to me. I've never watched him, but I've heard of him. Yeah. But I really, I love Brittany Broski. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And I've heard of her. she's she loves Cody Co. and has been on his podcast a few times. Mm-hmm. So. The dude is like I'm built obsessed. like a, he's built like a, an empire. Like with this. Yeah. His podcast is like part of, it's like a three-armed, you yeah. know. Cody I don't know, Co, corporation put us, now. Put us under your podcast empire, please. Yeah, please. We'll be like, we'll be lower tier. We'll start. Yeah. We'll start low. Like only, you only have to pay each of us 200,000 a year and we'll be good. Right. Each yeah, of that us. Would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, uh, my, 
Actually, I don't know who my favorite YouTuber is, but I was watching like Trisha Paytas earlier. So I've never heard of her. I might. You don't know. You know um, YouTube, but I, you don't know who Trisha Paytas is. I mean, I if I saw, I'd probably know her, but I don't watch her. She's been on the internet since like the beginning of time. Beginning of time, literally. Hmm. Well, I wasn't around for that. Okay. Well, speaking so. of YouTube, can I go next? Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> hey it's Fred <laughs> Oh boy Okay Hold on <laughs> I can't get up <laughs> Okay Man So is posing. If y'all don't know who Fred is I am so sorry Genuinely um, Fred is an old YouTuber He was like the top YouTuber in like 2008 2009 or something i think he started in 2007 and me and my friends when i was in like third or fourth grade watched him all the time he was featured on iCarly he was featured on Hannah Montana like he was everywhere and i remember he had brought out these toys Ugh, you can't really see but on the back there was three different kinds one he's in a straight jacket so a little offensive nowadays, I guess. What? Then Fred goes swimming and then your basic Fred. And I begged my parents for a Fred shirt from Hot Topic. And I am so grateful for them for A, getting me one. But B, getting me one that was way too big for me at the time. Because now I can still wear it. Now it's a little bit snug. But now I found this at Replay Toys in Murfreesboro. Shout out to Replay. Because these go... For super expensive. I have never seen one online for less than like $250. What? But it was a lot cheaper than that at replay. I don't quite want to say because y'all still won't judge me for how much I spent. It but, was 249 <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> but um, when I saw this, I immediately grabbed it. And it says nine phrases in Fred's voice. If you have never heard Fred, I'm warning you now. Oh, boy. No offense to people or babies. Hey, it's Fred! Oh my goodness. I love Judy! But she's such a brat! Such a but brat? Oh my goodness. Wait. I love Judy! But she's such a brat! Wait, there's a. There's no offense to people or babies. Oh my goodness. What's up, homie? It's Hannah, get off of it! I got a bathroom in that photo shoot. No offense to people or babies. Oh my goodness. Okay. There's one where he says, be a sweet, sweet pickle and everything will turn out for you in life. Everything. Um, and I think, oh, no offense to people who have more than one shirt. Oh, that's what he was saying. Mm. You know, the number of times on this podcast where we've come to the show and y'all segment and Patrick has held up some kind of stuff thing that speaks. That yep. speaks. <laughs> yep. Yep. Anyway, um, I loved Fred. I thought he was so funny. And honestly, I still would laugh at his videos. I'm not even lying. What there was a segment him? where he did Claudio. And he even says, like, he got so many comments where, from kids being like, I'm scared. And he said he was, like, kind of going off the deep end at that point. He had his own Nickelodeon show. He had three Nickelodeon movies. And honestly, they weren't that great. But the first one, I went back and watched it. It's so weird, but it's so funny. John Cena is his dad. Like, it is so random. It's so funny, though. So, shout out to Lucas Crickshank. He does, like, TikTok and YouTube now mm. outside of Fred. But um, I did do a TikTok of me showing off myself cosplayed as Fred. So, I love matching with my toys, of course. Um, but it didn't get many views. So, go watch my TikTok. Whatever happened to Fred? Uh, it, it, so the guy who played Fred is called Lucas Crookshank, mm -hmm. and he's the YouTuber. Oh. Like he he still does YouTube. He just doesn't do the Fred character. He'll like go back and react to like oh. the Fred movie and some of his old Fred videos and Fred TikToks and stuff. Um, and he's just like, yeah, it was really weird. It's like like that, he really doesn't have that much to say about it. Like he's huh. just like, yeah, I that did that face. and it was weird. Yeah. Okay. But it, he was like top of the internet. Him and like Annoying Orange, they did a collab oh. and it was like the most like screeching, just like, hey, Apple, hey, Apple, hey, Apple. And then, ah! like, yeah. oh. It's something you like that's on a tablet you give your child at O'Charlie so that they'll like, a hundred percent. Like, I you for an hour. am an iPad kid through and through. And yeah. I vouch, I am the speaker for iPad kids. 
Truly. It works. It used to be Angry yeah. Birds. Now it's, you know, mm. loud YouTubers. Oh. Dale? Uh, all right. So my <laughs> turn. Um, it's a shirt! And whereas Patrick always brings something that speaks, it's always something you're wearing. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Really. It's true. It's like, true. My jeans. Yeah. My jeans. <laughs> no, this shirt actually has a little bit more depth than just, oh, my jeans. Um, this one is a shirt I bought last um, September. Uh, I went to Oklahoma, and uh, on the way back, I stopped at a, uh, there's a Western Outfitters there that, um, I, in a town I used to live in that I, I really liked. So we went over there. In fact, Patrick was with me when I bought this shirt. Mm -hmm. um, Patrick, The jeans are from there too, right? Uh, this seems Actually, like, yeah, they are. This seems like a shirt that Patrick okayed. Yo, for I sure. forgot. Because Patrick would have had to um, verify that, the, I mean, it's got to go through the... No, I'm, I'm not asking care. him for his opinion when care. I'm buying clothes. I do actually really like the pockets, though. How they're these, like these, the these two pockets, little points. Yeah, yeah they're cool. <laughs> yeah, the lady, shout out to the lady who worked there. She was super oh, nice. super nice, super nice. Um, but there's more to this shirt than just that, right? So I bought this shirt in September. Uh, over It was Labor Day, which is the only reason I remember um, when I bought it. Bought it then, brought it home uh, to my house here. And um, that this shirt, this pair of pants, and something else too. I forgot. Some, I bought something else there too. Sat in the, the plastic bag that I bought them in for probably September. A year? December. Probably like five months, hmm. like right next to my front door. Because I forgot that I bought them and they were in the bag, and I had just piles of stuff at the time. Because uh, as as both of these guys know, I was I was really busy, so I constantly had like stuff for production, um, like like boxes and bags and things I was carrying in and out on the daily mm. for like uh, for for production for school for things like that. And so there's always stuff there, so I never even thought about looking at, um, I never thought about looking at like what was in that bag. And then one day I was like, "What's in this bag?" And I was like, oh, it's this shirt that I bought. And <laughs> rediscovered um, it. Rediscovered it. And I was like, this is awesome. And it's super comfortable. Like, this this material is great. But then beyond that, right, I wore it once. Cool. Wore it a second time. And as I was sitting there, I was, I was fiddling with, with this, um, with just the tail end of the shirt here. And I look down, and I see my name. What? My name is literally embroidered onto this shirt. What? D-A-L-E. Yes. Wait. I bought this shirt in September. I, I I kid you not. It's not custom? No. This is not custom. I have a lot of custom clothes. What but does I bought the tag this, say? I, I don't know. Wait. I didn't look. Hold on. Yes. What? Yes. I bought this shirt. Six months later, I I go and find that... I don't think there's anything on there. Rock okay. and roll denim. That's all it says. Yeah. I'm freaking out. Yeah. So this is the yeah. name of the... Like manufacturer of the shirt? No, 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 no. The manufacturer was what? Rock and roll denim? Yeah. Rock and roll denim. That's the name of the manufacturer. But here on the tail of the shirt is my name. And I don't know why. What? Oh my God. And I don't gosh. know how. And I was like. I would dedicate my life to figuring what? out why. Wait, did you, you didn't see like your mom or anything? No, 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 no. wearing uh -uh. it, right? Uh -uh. No, I bought the shirt in September. Uh, the next day, we came back out here to Tennessee, from Oklahoma to Tennessee. This shirt has lived literally in the plastic bag by my front door for five months. In the bag, folded up with the tag, has not left that spot until I threw it in the washing machine, washed it, and wore it. And I, and I was like, wow. It was that, meant for you. I love so this shirt. It's, it's such a comfortable shirt. And, of course, you know, it's got this Western cut, right? It's got the snaps instead of the buttons. I love it. Um, and like I said, the fabric is great. It has just a little bit of a stretch to it, but it's really soft. And it has my name, dude. I was like... That... I'm well, actually, my real name is Fred. So when I found this shirt, I was like, oh my goodness, this is like... My this is the same thing. thing. You look yeah. like a Fred. Yeah. My dad used to call it Fred is Red. And I was like, it's not... Mm. Fred is... No. <laughs> actually, like, he typically like, wears a blue shirt, but... Yeah. It's like real original dad. Real original. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But also, I was re changed. reading the back of this box and the one with the straight jacket literally is called lost my meds fred oh my <laughs> like that's wrong <laughs> yeah youtube was a rough one back in the early it time. really was it really was but i can't say that i was like I, I i was i was not one of the the kids at that point in time that like spent all my time on youtube but there were definitely like shows and 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 um uh 
and 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 videos that I liked. Like I really liked uh, Good Mythical Morning. Yeah, like the early days They're of Good Mythical ran. Morning. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, and I liked their stuff even prior to that, which they j- would just called themselves Rhett and Link, right? Mm-hmm. Their their little comedy spoof like parody songs were great. Um, I loved those. Uh, I I am a big fan of Llamas with Hats. I think it's awesome. It's hilarious. Um, if you wander into it now, you will probably question your sanity and mine as well. But if you grew up with it, it was quite funny. Carl, that kills people, you know, and stuff like that. It's hilarious. But one of the llamas, maybe both of them, wear hats. I can't. Yeah, both of them do. Yeah. Um, I was going to judge, but I'm great. still watching it. Great. Too. I'm Every now and then I do. Too. I go back and I re binge the whole, whole series. I think it's like eight episodes, and most of them are only like a minute, minute. And we a half. should put Fred up on the big screen and have a little watch party. We should not. We should not do <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I would probably go insane. I'd start throwing things. But that was that was uh, that and other random videos was about the extent of my YouTube like watching like um, I was the kid that at that point in time would go watch like Vine compilations just compilation videos on YouTube because I'd oh that's like I'd, later YouTube though it was a little later but I didn't have at that point in time like a phone or an iPod to like watch like actual Vine and so I would watch I never had the Vine app either I just would see them on like Twitter and stuff oh uh, yes yeah I didn't have Twitter I shouldn't have had Twitter it, that place is like a toxic wasteland. It's a wasteland now. Yeah. I'm so can we go back to the fact that God chose this shirt for you? <laughs> <laughs> like Jesus chose this shirt it's, for you. It's a great shirt, man. It's great. I love it. So that is really interesting. You should yeah. like research that. So. Yeah. And Dale, I feel like is not like a common, common name. No, no. not enough to not like anymore. have it just on a shirt. Like it's not like when you go to like a national park and they have all those keychains with people's names. Even there, sometimes I don't find my name and they got a, like a hundred names. What's the chances of it being embroidered on a shirt? What was your reaction when you saw it? I was like, I doubted my eyesight for a minute. I really did. I would too. Even, you know, even though I think I was probably wearing my glasses at that point, mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, what? <laughs> what if and we just I read to- it and it says Jesse or something? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even say it's like I'm lying this maybe, whole maybe the girl that was really nice at the store like maybe she actually did know who you were because of this podcast and she was like maybe. hoping that you would come in and like buy that shirt specifically she was trying uh, to maybe. give you her number or something uh, she it. misspelled her number really really badly yeah, it's, D-A-L-E is, is <laughs> not a good phone number mm. I don't think it would go anywhere yeah Except like maybe those like you know self alert messages like sometimes those are maybe like four or six digits but that's like it yeah like Pizza Hut's over there texting you like your pizza's ready in twenty minutes how um, often do number. you text Pizza Hut he texts he texts <laughs> okay Domino's. it's Domino's right, but well, <laughs> <laughs> on that note uh, Dale with his Dale shirt is yep. going to be back after this break and talk all about battle of the bands 2024 thank you for watching this clip of successfully unsigned if you want to see more content like this in the future please hit that like and subscribe also don't forget to find us on social media platforms at successfully underscore unsigned or on our website at su-podcast.com welcome back everybody to successfully unsigned we are going to talk about the 2024 murphy's murphysboro battle of the bands Oh, uh, where do we want to start, guys? I think we should start with how did why did why did you? Sorry, I literally fully <laughs> interrupted you. That was actually rude. I'm so sorry. You're good. You're good. Um, I also train of thought now. So why don't you finish that thought, Patrick? That was. I would like to set a formal apology to my co-hosts, um, David. I guess our beef is finally settled since the second episode because <laughs> I just betrayed him. Um, I was gonna say like start with like how you decided to come up with this idea three years ago. Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. So this idea came from, um, well, I okay. So in Murfreesboro, there are uh, a number of places you can play. Um, like if you're a cover band, right? There you can, there's there's a number of restaurants and and venues you can go play your cover music, and that's that's great. I love that. And there's some places you can play some original things too. However, there's far fewer places you can play original music in Murfreesboro. And of those places, most of them are small like house venues, mm-hmm. which is which is fun. That's a great scene. And in fact, I've actually played a couple of shows in house venues, which is kind of what opened my eyes and enlightened me to like, oh, well, where else can you play? Right? 
where yeah. else can you play? You can go, you know, um, you can go to the laundry room, you can go to the bunk, you know, you can go to places like that. And that's great, but you can only get so many people there, right? Cause they're small venues and you know, it's usually, um, so a lot of the venues are usually kind of throw together PA, like who does, you know, does somebody own something? Let's put it together and let's put on a show, right? Let's have some fun, kind of very college crowd, which is great. I love that scene. It's an amazing scene. And the laundry room admittedly has uh, a very nice, very nice yeah, PA. I love the laundry, the laundry room. room's great. Shout they out have, Christian. Yeah, shout out Christian. They have a great PA there. Um, but still, it's a very small venue, right? So where can you play that's bigger than that in Murfreesboro without having to travel to Nashville? That was kind of the thought process. And I was like, well, you know, I'm working at this theater. Now, it's not a massive theater, but it's 300 seats. The stage is pretty large. It's, I believe, the second largest stage in Murfreesboro, uh, aside from Tucker Theater at MTSU. And I was like, well, this is a community theater, and I, I it, it's owned by the city. It's there for the community. Why don't we have some event that represents that aspect of the community? Because there's a huge college crowd. There's a huge music scene in Murfreesboro of original music that doesn't get shown the light of day in Murfreesboro, right? Those bands have to travel to Nashville to go play anything of their own stuff, right? They can maybe go to these other places and play, you know, nine original, uh, nine covers and one original maybe, but like, where can they show their own music? Yeah. And I knew that struggle myself as an artist trying to find venues to play at. And if I ever wanted to play somewhere bigger, I'm like, well, well I would have to go to Nashville. Why don't we have something here? Mm -hmm. And so th I saw the need. Um, I saw the opportunity that presented itself because I was, I was there and we could support it there at the theater and host it at the theater that I was working at, you know? And so we took the, we took the opportunity and made the event. Nice. And it was that easy. It okay, was that easy. Over. Yeah. It was that easy. <laughs> so what, did, what do you think? So, what do you think your bit? Well, I'll ask that question at the end, but can you like walk us through the process of like putting this together? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a long process. Yeah. Uh, it takes, when the, do you start, have to start thinking about. So the first one, since we didn't know, you know, I, I, it was the first show I had promoted other than my own concerts. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different, right? Um, so it was a much shorter production time frame. These last two years, especially this year, we booked the night for this 2024 Murfreesboro Battle of the Bands, the third one. We booked it the week after the second one was over. Okay. So we performed on a, the, the show happened on a Saturday, the second one did, and then by that next, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, we'd already penciled in, hey, we're taking this date next year for it. Mm -hmm. And production, in a sense, began then, right, which included... All the following, you know, all the follow up of, of um, photographers, yep. right? Who who shot it? Let me get those photos because I need those photos to promote the next year, right? Did anyone take videos? I think the second year there wasn't any. It, I don't remember any like real videos taken the second year. But if there was, I need that stuff to promote it for next year. Mm -hmm. Who's the winning band? Right? Contact them. Stay in contact with them. Uh, see if we can get them to make an appearance at the next one. That way, shout they out help. hexproof. Yep, shout out hexproof. Uh, they've been on the podcast. So if you want to hear more uh, about Hexproof, go listen to that interview. Um, you know, it's, it's stuff like that that starts literally the week after yeah. the last one is done. Uh, but then you do have a nice kind of lulling period where things aren't moving quickly, right? You have you have time to formulate ideas. How are we going to make this next one different? And we took our time with that. I started really hitting the rubber to the road for this uh, for this year in september so september october november december january and then it happened the first weekend of february so five to six months mm -hmm. is the production clock that i went with this this year for this show yeah. and you know that's it, it starts with finding the bands yeah right you have to find the bands if you don't have the bands you can't perform so sent out band calls online did a lot of social media stuff made a lot of posts, made a few videos, kind of promoting like, hey, if you're in a band and you're in Murfreesboro, you live here, you want to sign up for this. It's it's making, it's doing small things like making a Google dot, uh, a Google form, sorry, a Google form that people can go in and, and put in like, here's the name of my band. Here's our members. Here's our social media tags. Uh, here's a link to our music. Here's a bio of the band, Yeah. right? Getting information about who they are. 
And each year this developed. This this did not all happen the first year. The first year we literally took every band that wanted to be a part of it, right? It was it was it was much smaller the first year. And all three years have grown quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um and, and and changed quite a bit because we learned, right? The second year is when I started the Google uh form and then um learned that hey, there's a lot of stuff I a lot more things I needed. You know, so we updated it for the third year, right? And so it's finding the bands, it's making stuff like that, it's getting the, the, the call out there making posters. We made posters and put those all around town and said, hey, if you're in a band, sign up to this. Here's a here's a QR code. Scan it. Put in your band information. Give us a link to your stuff. You have till the end of the month, right? I think our sign-up period was the month of October is um, is the, is the time frame that we're like, hey, sign up for this. And so you have to, you have to go out. You know, you have to take it to businesses. We took it to like local music stores, um, to record shops, to vintage shops, to coffee shops, to restaurants, to um, ice cream parlors, to anywhere that we, you know, campus, to anywhere that we could. We took, we, you know, we took those posters and we're like, hey, if you know anybody in a band, tell them to sign up. Mm. And again, each year grew. And, you know, the first year we had seven bands and all seven performed. Um, we learned seven was too many bands for one night. So we're like, okay, we're going to limit it to six. But, you know, of course we had more than that apply. The second year we had, I think nine bands apply. Of course, again, we limited it to six. Um, and then this last year it went up to 17 bands that applied in that first, in that one month. Yeah. That was the biggest thing I noticed about it Mm -hmm. was like, there was way more bands that applied this year than last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and when you have 17 bands, how do you narrow that down to six? Mm-hmm. Right. So this year. You make them fight each other. We make them fight each other. Yeah. There's actually a, a pre battle. There is. There yeah. is. Where they physically fight. <laughs> like an anchor man when all yeah. the news stations go at each other. Right. It's all the bands. Yeah. But, you know, you do have to ask the question how do we make that decision? Mm. You know, I'm producing this event. Uh, and there was a team around me that of, of great people that helped so, so, so much in making this event happen. Um, but you know, do do I do I use them? Do I use somebody else? Do I make the decision? Uh, this year, I I did not want to make the decision. Be the only one making the decisions this year on who was there. Um, last year was the the second year was a little easier because again we had nine bands and six, so we only had to you know limit a handful. Yeah. Um, and it was it was pretty easy because one of them didn't qualify because they didn't live in Murfreesboro. That was one of the stipulations with the, was that they, they had, had to, to be live. yeah somebody in the band has to be in Murfreesboro or Rutherford County, right? Mm-hmm. We're not going to exclude you if you're two miles outside of city limits, right? Um, so it was easy to kind of narrow down the second year to the six. This year though, with seventeen, I'm like I know a lot of these bands. I've met them either previous years or at other shows or I've just met them in and around or I might have even been the one talking to them saying, hey, we have this event. You should sign up. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be the one making those decisions because yeah. that's a lot of bias, right? And the point of this event is, yes, to be a competition, um, but it's also to promote local bands, right? And I don't want there to be any like, hey, this wasn't fair. This was, this was biased. This was whatever. I don't want that. So we put together uh, a, a, com- a committee of some of the people there that I work with that have no relation to the bands whatsoever, mm-hmm. have probably never heard of them, never listened to them uh, from a variety of different backgrounds, right? So there were, you know, different musical tastes involved, different uh, experience, different educations, different, all those kind of things that went together. And I said, hey, here's their applications, Right here's their applications. Take this stack. Go listen to these bands. Write down uh, in order one through seventeen or whatever. Or give me your top six. Give me your top seven. Whatever it looked like. I forget exactly how I worded that at the time, but I was like, give me a list of who you want to see in this, and we'll compile these lists and see who's common. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, give me your wild cards too. The ones you're like, I'm not really sure of, but we'll see. They might fit. They might not. I'd be okay with them. And then write out the ones that you're like, no, you know, these yeah. bands aren't going to be a fit for this event. Right. And so you, you go through that process, you find the bands and you, and we came away with the six. And so then you start contacting those bands and getting the entry fees, right? Scheduling times for them to come in and sign contracts because there's always paper, there's always paperwork, especially when you're dealing with the city, right? It was a city event. Uh, and it was a competition, so they again they had it. They had a small entry fee just to kind of ensure seriousness, nothing hefty. 
but just something so that they, so it's not just like, you know, somebody who's like, oh, hey, you know, why don't we just throw together a band and do this? There's, it's fine, and there's a place for that, but this event is just to showcase people who want to promote their own music, their own original music. Yeah. Right, that's the purpose of this event. So, um, so things like that, getting them in, signing the contracts, you know, getting any paperwork signed, showing them the venue and saying, hey, this is what we have, this is what we're working with, do you have any questions, what is your show like? You know, letting them know the, the rules of the events, right? Because, again, it's competition. So there was a few rules here and there. Um, getting them used to things. Then there's stuff like, find, you know, getting the new posters designed for just the general the posters people. posters look so good this year. So they were my the favorite. Posters. They were cool. They were so good. Yeah, one of one of my coworkers, Travis, has done an amazing job. Yeah. Um, excuse me. He designed both the posters and the, uh, the T-shirts as well. They look good. Does, has done a great job. And couldn't be happier with those. Do you feel, uh, quick pause, like, yeah. do you feel like you were able to divvy up a lot of the tasks more this year than you were in previous years? Yes. Because okay. yes. I feel like that first year was like all on you. Yes. Mm-hmm. They were like, okay, you want to throw a show? Prove it to me. Prove you can yeah. do it. And then you did it and they were like, oh, I guess this is possible. And then the second year, yeah. a little bit more people helped you. But I feel like this year you were able to like delegate instead mm-hmm. of being oh, absolutely. mix engineer, stage hand, yeah. like you yeah. just were like everywhere. So <laughs> so you mentioned that the first year, um, the first year of the Battle of the Bands, uh, yeah, I, I, I promoted, uh, produced and promoted the show and then also was the mix engineer was was the was the a1 for the show <laughs> this man he was walking uh, around with an xbox live headset <laughs> yep yep um just the one the one <laughs> muff here it was crazy but the first year we didn't even have comms for that yeah i was literally like just i mean i had a couple of people backstage working and i know and people helped day of but yeah like you said the first year was primarily me putting the work in yeah because i was the only one with the vision now there were there were elements that were brought in from other people Again, posters and T-shirts were were um, some of the posters, some of the and, and then the T-shirts were designed by somebody else. But yeah, that first year was mostly like, I mean, this is your show, you do the thing. I yeah. mean, I was the only one who knew what I wanted out of it, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so after that, after it was after the good show, oh, and I, I was gonna say, um, that first year, I found <laughs> I realized the week of the show that I had never mixed a live band before. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, I yeah. did. I, I, I remember was sit- you told me that. I was laying in bed. I mean, I was so, so caught up in the production and so caught up in all the behind the scenes, like getting things from, from point A to point B and getting the bands there and getting the, everybody else there that I never even stopped to consider. <laughs> I've never mixed a band live. I've done studio stuff, but I've never mixed a band live. This man said, oh, they got to sound good too, don't they? <laughs> and I was like, oh, Oops. snap. But honestly, I remember, I remember talking to you about that and I remember saying... But honestly, Dale, I think if there's any person to just be like, all right, sink or swim, I'm just going to do it. Like, this is how I'm going to learn. It'd be you to do that. And like, I think that's the perfect opportunity for you to, all right, well, I want this event to go as well as possible. So I better learn right here, right now. Yeah. And, and, and sound check was my first time doing that. Yeah. And I was like, man, I've never done one and I'm about to do six or seven actually that first year in a rapid back to back to back manner in which, you know, we were shooting for I, that first year. I was like, Hey, I want five minute changeovers between these bands. Now that didn't happen. <laughs> no, it didn't. that didn't yeah. happen. But that first year, that was my goal. I was like, I want five minute changeovers. One band's done. I want them to be able to walk off stage. Next one walks in, plugs up and they're good to go. Right. Um, so yeah, I was very, very fast paced. Uh, but with that in mind, you know, after the first year, people did see like, hey, this is this is a cool event. You know, we like this. And they started bringing their own ideas like, hey, what if we did this? You know, I remember we had a we had a tech meeting after the show, you know, the, the following week, like, hey, and I started taking notes, right? Wrote down everything that was said, like, hey, you know, that this was cool. But what if we did this instead? Mm-hmm. Um uh, this didn't really work. We could change this and alter it and it would fit better this way. Mm-hmm. And out of that list of notes, we started incorporating things for the next year. And then that again molded into the next year. And people began becoming very excited for this event, especially after seeing the second year, which was such a huge step up from the first year in the production that people were like, this is really cool. I want to be involved in this. Mm-hmm. And they started asking, like I was, I was getting, you know, both coworkers and people who weren't even related to the theater at all asking like, Hey, this is a really cool event. What, what's going on with it? What more can I do? You know, can I, can I help with this? Can I help with that? Right. So like this third year, 
so many more people wanted to be a part of it and mm-hmm. were willing to take on responsibilities that I didn't have to do everything myself, which was great. And that was, that was again, to an extent, you know, growth even into the second year, but even more so this year. Right. So I've been, I was hands off with most of the sound stuff this year, which was, which was great. Uh, helped a little bit as needed with setup and things like that, but I was able to completely leave that alone. Um, the light design, I still, I still did the light design myself. It was good. Um, it was really good. Yeah. But I did have some help like setting that up and that was, that was great. Some people had some ideas that they pitched out there like, oh, this is cool. Let's, let's try that. Um, I was able, you know, um, another, another person took on the judges and took care of them the whole night. So I didn't have to worry about them other than explaining like, Hey, this is, this is the event. This is the criteria. This is kind of how we expect like the judge, uh, the, the bands to perform and kind of what we want you to look at when you're judging, you know, I was able to, I interacted with them, but I didn't have to take care of them. Yeah. Right. Um, the That's bands, crazy. I interacted with them, but I didn't have to take care of them. We, we assigned somebody like, Hey, you're the band liaison. It's your job to go take care of, make sure that they have, if they need water. Mm-hmm. Right. We had some catering. So make sure they know where that's at. Right. Make sure they get loaded in and out in a mannerly order during sound check. Right. So we I had a lot of like catering. That's fancy. Yeah, yeah. That food. Yeah. Y'all had like sh- sh- charcuterie charcuterie boards. Boards. Yeah. 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 Man, that second year I was back there, it was a problem. <laughs> it was a problem. I ate so much yeah, cheese that yeah. night. I don't even remember. Like, it was so much it, cheese. We had so out. much left over. We were giving it away at the end of the night, right? Yeah. I didn't um, get any. Well, no, that's too bad. Eat the chicken nugget on your chest. Yeah. So, I mean, but that just goes to show, even like catering, like we had to figure that out. Like how many, I had to start, they were asking me like, you know, questions I never would have thought of if I didn't, wasn't in that position. They were like, and I was just like, okay, can we get some catering? Cool. Um, well, how many people do we have? Oh, um, okay. So we have so many, so many bands. They have so many people. Uh, the judges, okay. Um, our crew, our, our 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 staff, okay, okay. Well, what about our volunteer crew? Because like this year, some last year too, we had a couple volunteers last year, but this year we had a crew of um, kids that we called Tech Juniors. They did a phenomenal job. They're older high school kids. Um, they were part of our Tech Junior program at the theater. That was okay. the name of the program, and uh, they were learning how to do, you know. Um, stage management and lights and sound and you know tech the tech side of theater they were already learning those things for the musical productions that were going on and we opened this event up to them and said hey if you want to be a part of this too you can come learn what it's like doing a live sound show so they were like when can we be there and I was like well I'm going to be here all day Friday and I'm going to be here all day Saturday. Well, I don't expect you to be here this entire time. Getting this is there for like 23 hours. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, this is when I'm going to be here. They're like, can I leave now? And he's like, no! But, <laughs> plug in this mic cable! <laughs> but you know what? The, those the, those kids, they asked me, like, when are you going to be here? And I'm like, well, I'm going to be here at like 10, and I'm probably not going to leave till 10. Mm. And they were like, okay, we'll be here at 10. Period. They were but, like, we want to be there. Nice. They and you know excited. what? That's something about like any kids in any sort of like theater or arts department, yeah, they will be some of the most dedicated, yeah. loyal mm-hmm. kids that you will know. You're a kid and energy. This is a theater kid. Um, but especially the stage crew, because yeah. I remember the stage crew and they were working overtime and they get the least appreciation. True. It's true. A hundred percent. And so, but they always were really good at their jobs and like wanted to be there and yeah. work hard. And like, I, even my friend, shout out to my friend Mia, like she literally ended up going back to um, um our high school and worked in the theater there because mm-hmm. it's something that she appreciates and loves so much. So shout out to those kids for doing that because like it's yeah. it's really special and like even I remember being in more obviously like the acting category. Mm-hmm. We would be there till like 10 p.m. but then the stage crew kids were there till like 11. Yeah. Facts. So you know and I think uh, that that next day they uh, two of them in particular really really stood out as they got there when we got there. I think, I think, um, you know, I, uh, well, they, they came a little bit after, but we told them not to, cause we had to go out and do some things first. Uh, so they got there 10 30, 11 AM and we didn't leave. Um, we didn't leave the theater till after midnight that night. And two of those, two of those, uh, high schoolers stayed that entire time. And we're like, we want to keep going. Yeah. We wow. want to do this. Wow. And I was very impressed with them. They put in a ton of hard work and it showed, right? Because we, we had a much bigger stage crew this year and it showed too in the changeovers. They were much faster than oh, yeah. previous years. Yeah. Um, which goes to show like there's only so much you can do on your, by yourself. Yes. So if you're, if you're right. wanting to promote a show, 
your own show or somebody else's, if you want to get three other bands together, whatever, and put mm-hmm. on a show and just be the promoter, just be the producer, find people to work with. Um, because you can do a ton on your own. That's true. Mm-hmm. And you can, and you're the only one that can push yourself to do those things, but there's only so much you can do before you run out of resources or you run out of time or you run out of energy or quite frankly, you run out of ideas mm-hmm. and other people can fill in those gaps and build it into something bigger yeah. because you can't do things with people if you don't do things with people. Like that was something that I didn't really realize. Copyright I Copyright that. It, that statement. But it's so true. You can't true. do things with people if you can't do things with people. Dale Shackfold. Fold. Shackfold. <laughs> Shackfold. <laughs> you know, but like I, I was I was doing some interviews um, about live sound production. I was interviewing people who were promoters and lighting designers and audio engineers and things like that for a, for a study. And one of the questions or one of the answers, sorry, that I got out of one of the show promoters was I was like, hey, how are you, how are you getting people, you know, to the shows if you're a venue? Because he worked for a venue. And as a venue, unless you're like some really nice historic venue or a really, really cool venue, most people aren't going to the show for the venue. They're not, right? They go for the bands. They go for the whatever. Mm-hmm. They go for the yeah, music. True. So if you're the venue, how do you get people there? And he gave me the answer. He's like, well, if you're a venue... Tell the bands, you know, you get X amount of money, right? Whatever. X amount of money, uh, flat fee, and then you get a percentage of the door. Mm-hmm. And that's a fairly common thing. Mm-hmm. Um, something I really hadn't considered, though, at that point in time. Uh, and unfortunately, because of how city things we wor- city things work, we weren't able to incorporate that. Yeah. But I was able to incorporate some of the concepts surrounding it of people are there for the bands. The bands need to promote themselves. Yes. So if you're promoting an event, get the band to promote mm-hmm. themselves. Yeah. Put nothing in their way that will keep them from promoting themselves. Mm. In fact, do things to make it so easy for them to promote themselves that all they have to do is click three buttons. That means as a promoter, you need to be making graphics. Make the graphics for the bands. You know, make two or three, right? It can they can be almost reskins of themselves. You don't have to create a brand new thing every time. Yes. Like we took the poster, right? We took a poster. It was really cool. And then we're like, okay, what if we shrunk it down into a square for Instagram? Or what if we changed the dimensions and made it for Facebook? What if we um, took it to something simple like CapCut and took a photo and did their little animation, right? Maybe it adds a glitch effect or maybe it adds some weird like color distortions Yeah, and throw a backing track, you know, some random song on it. Post it to Instagram as a reel. You've used one piece of content for one, two, at least three, maybe four different outlets all that quickly yep. make those things give it to the bands and even if you have to write captions for them do something make it to where it's so easy for those bands to promote themselves that they don't even have to think about it because they're going to be the ones that get people in the doors mm, that's right? good though that's really good and it again it goes to show that you can't do things with people if you don't do things if with people, you don't do things with people. The more people you get involved in your production, the more likely other people are going to want to join you as well. I'm so proud of Dale that and his incredible. growth because so many years I told Dale, I was like, Dale, it's okay, it's okay to ask for help, and not always in this circumstance is what we were necessarily talking about. Yeah, but. It, I'm so happy to see that you like, <laughs> you know, got people to help you out and be like, hey, it's I true. need help with X, Y, Z. And you're not afraid to ask for help because you can't do it all by yourself. And that is just a general rule yeah. for life. But of course, especially for artists and, mm-hmm. you know, working in the music industry period, like it's all about who you know. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason that it's all about who you know is because those people are going to be able to help you meet your goals mm-hmm. musically yeah. or career wise. So I'm just, I'm so proud of you for asking for help for, <laughs> yay. You know, and, 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 and <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And even beyond that, right. Even if that means like, like you said, I, I have a hard time asking and accepting help in a lot of ways. Um, mostly because I, I view it as, as a burden to other people. Maybe I shouldn't, but I, I, I do. That's a mental thing of my, of my own that I have to work through. But even if you have to give some, somebody else something small, something mm-hmm. small to do, even if it just is something small, to, but yeah. it, it, that, that gets them involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when people feel like they're involved in any form or fashion, as long as it's a meaningful form or fashion, um, 
they're going to want to put their own effort into it if yeah. they think they're a part of something bigger than themselves. And that's what that event became. They take pride in it. They take mm-hmm. pride in it. And um, yeah, I, I just have one more question like yeah. as we sort of get to the end of the segment. But um, what are what is like one lesson that you feel like you've learned, like the biggest lesson you've learned mm. throughout the three years? Biggest lesson I've learned throughout the three years. Of doing this event. Oh, man. Um I mean, it, what if he's just like, I'm awesome. <laughs> you know, just like, no, I put no. on a show. Yeah. Um, the, 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 okay, I'll, I'll list two. And one of them's a bit of a cop out, I guess. And it is, you can't do everything by yourself. Mm. Um, it, that it, it just, it's true. It's true. The second one is if you, there's something that you see that's cool that you want to do or an idea that you have, just honestly, just try it. Just, just do it. Right, because that event <laughs> has turned into something really cool. Did you just we, do the Shia LaBeouf there? Uh, okay. I did it. He first. did it. First. Okay. I did it first. Okay. 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 All right. But seriously, just just go out and try something, and you don't know what will come of it. I mean, yeah. that's that event's become really cool, and, and that brings it full circle to our yeah. very first episode yeah. where we talked about putting yourself out there creatively, and the first step is literally just doing it because you think it's cool and you want to do it. So just do it. shout out to Dale yeah. for being the spokesperson of creativity. And that first year, I think we had something small, like I think we had 50, 50 people there mm. in the audience. Yeah. And we've over tripled, you know, our audience. And, wow. and there were babies and in the doubled. audience. Yeah. There were out. babies with you earmuffs. Know? in the. Like, <laughs> there there really was a were. baby that looked like it was about to call an airstrike in the audience. <laughs> like it was like in the air. It yeah. had like a, I mean, it was yeah. crazy, but yeah, you're right. It's, yeah. there was a lot of people there this year, man. Yeah. Kudos to you. You did it. And the last lesson you learned is can't work with people. If you don't work with people. Yeah. Okay. So Dale, what would you say to anyone who, other than just do it, just some solid words of advice for anyone who wants to put on their own show, whether they are an artist or whether they are more of like the tech or if they're like kind of you both, Mm -hmm. I mean, even advice from you putting on your own concerts at the laundry room a few years ago. Um, the, 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 the first thing I would say is there's a ton of free resources that you can use and use them all. Mm, um, that's a good one. If it's something, you know, if you don't have a graphic designer, that's fine. Use Canva. Use mm-hmm. Adobe Express. Use Microsoft Paint. Use whatever you have to use. You know, as simple and stupid as it sounds, if it works, it works. And you can lean into a style, right? If you are not a graphic designer, lean into the idea that you can draw stick figures right? Whatever you do, make it look purposeful and make it fit the aesthetic of what you're going for. Because having anything out there is better than having nothing. True. People cannot come to a show they do not know about. True. And very true. Oh my goodness. And so true. Yeah. So many artists that, that, that I've, I've, I've seen or worked with, or even ones that have been in shows that I've put on. Don't know how to promote. I'll say it. Get your act together and start promoting yourself. I am sick and tired of these artists who I don't know anything about their shows because yeah. they never post about it until the day of in their Instagram story. Yeah. Yeah. Be better. And here's the thing. You're being yelled at by a man wearing a chicken nugget necklace. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you're at in your life. Okay. You know, be but, better. But here's the thing. Here's the thing though. Right. Everybody says, you know, oh, I'm too, I'm too nervous. I don't know how to do this. Um, people might think I'm weird if I'm posting about my own show or all kind of things like that. And let me tell you the best piece of advice I ever heard on anything about promoting yourself as an artist. And we've probably said it on this podcast before. <laughs> I'm sure we have. But it's okay. if people are following you, it's because they want to see your stuff, right? If Literally. they don't want to follow you, they won't follow you. Exactly. So post about it. And I'm not talking about if you're doing a show, if you're doing a show and you're a small artist, right? And this is your first show, second show, third show, 10th show, whatever, right? And you're trying to gain traction, post every day. Don't post once a week unless mm. you're like six months out, right? Yeah. Or maybe, maybe three months out. But when you're the month of the show, you need to be posting every day some piece of content. Not, not every piece of content has to say, come to our show. You don't have to stand there and be like, come to our show on March 3rd. You don't, ha- you don't have to do that. But 
do something, yeah. whatever it is, play a song, and then at the end say, hey, if you want to hear more, come to the show. Yeah. Or you don't even have to say it. You could put a blank screen at the end and type it in there as a piece of text. Yeah. Whatever you do, you have to promote yourself because if you don't promote yourself, no one else will either. Nope. People aren't going to join you doing something if you're not already doing it, especially nope. when it's for you. And again, just to reiterate, if people are following you, they want to see your things. They want to see your stuff. They want to see your posts. And if they don't want to see that, they'll unfollow. And you haven't lost a fan. What you've lost is more or less dead weight to a caring community that's going to be around you. Speaking of dead weight, shout out to the subscriber that <laughs> unsubscribed. We had 130 followers. Now we're up to 131 All right. okay. on YouTube. Go subscribe. But... It went from 130 to 129. So I know you're not listening out there, obviously, <laughs> but I just want to say that I hope you are always just uncomfortable. Like you're always itchy or your food just never tastes quite right. Or um, I don't know. Just I hope you're uncomfortable in your life after doing something so hurtful like that. So. Just remember that the next time that you think about unsubscribing us. That's a warning to everyone. People are so confused right now. Like Dale has just been saying these like really uplifting, like almost <laughs> spiritual messages. Then Patrick's been threatening people. It's just, it's so inconsistent. It's a buddy cop uh, dynamic. Yeah. We're going yeah, full buddy cop. That's right why now. we're yeah, here guys. Cop, bad cop. <laughs> that's why we're here. Good Fred, bad Fred. I'm, I'm lost my meds, Fred. He's I'm Dale. Your basic Fred. <laughs> what does that leave me? What's the other one? Uh, Fred goes swimming. Okay. Which is his like I'll, most famous video? I'll be actually. that guy. I like that guy. Yeah. I want to go swimming. Sounds good. We'll watch Fred go swimming. And you'll, it'll feel like you're swimming. <laughs> okay, we won't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, you're absolutely right. People aren't going to know unless yeah. you literally get to the point where you're like annoying somebody. Yeah. Like, yeah. Literally, literally, it's like you get online. And you're like this guy again. Okay, I guess I'll like. What is he doing? You know, like yeah. it has to be like that, or else people won't. And and the other thing too that I've more recently kind of come to realize from hearing somebody else talk about it is if you're an artist you know you can make the exact same piece of content three times and post it three times and chances are really good especially if you're doing like if you're on tiktok or you're doing instagram reels that's um heavy in um sending it out there to people that don't already follow or or subscribe or whatever to you chances are really good those three pieces of content are going to hit three different groups of people yeah and you can make the exact same you can post the exact same video if you have to and each time it may hit a completely different group of people and that's okay right because you've made less work go farther whoever said that every time you make something or post something out there that it has to be something new how many times do you write the exact same song well you only write the song once but when you put it out there to stream on Spotify and Apple Music and, and, and Pandora and Tidal, how many times do you expect that song to be played? Mm. You expect it to be played a lot, but you've only made it once. So why do we treat videos differently? Right? Wow. You can use that same piece of content over and over again and reach new audiences. Now, I'm not saying post only post one thing. Don't only post one video. <laughs> you have to have some something there, right? But you can use the same thing multiple times. Yeah. Or recut it, you know? If you take one day of, of, of videoing, like, you know, yourself singing a song, do three different edits of it. That's a good, Use yeah, the that's same a good thing. idea. Use the same thing. Make less work for you more. Um, and that applies whether you're promoting a show, that applies whether you're promoting yourself as an artist, that applies whether you're trying to promote, you know, a new song that comes out, whatever that looks like, you know, making content isn't always easy. And it certainly is time consuming and it's the part that I think most artists hate the most. So do less of it, but make it do more for you. Wow. That was deep. <laughs> People are like crying. They're just like, oh my gosh. Because so, I yelled at them. He's right. And both. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Him. The emotional roller coaster we've been on. <laughs> Dale, see, this is what people have been wanting. Yeah. From Dale I, Shack. I think this was the best battle of the bands. Um, that, Thank you. Uh, of the three that you've done, like I thought it was really successful. A lot of people were complimenting it afterward. Yes. Complimenting the bands, um, saying it was like the most diverse they have seen as far as the battle of the bands. Um, shout out to all the bands that played, Warplay. 
Why I don't like just forget play, all of them? Conundrum, Blue Willow, The Feedles, Outpost, and Zoe Imperium. Mm-hmm. All those go people. Check them out. Go and, follow all of them. And hey, if you yeah, want we'll to hear, if you want to hear interviews from those bands, you can check them out right now at the link in the description. Yes, and you can see my beautiful Liberty Spikes for the '90s costume contest that I did win. Yes, yes, it's true. There's never it's true. any doubt. There's there's um, a little there's a little recap of the Battle yes. of Bands from footage of the day of the show. So if you want to mm-hmm. see some footage from the day, if you want to see that kind of stuff, if we you want to see Atlanta from Hexproof, last year's winners, um, absolute champions, absolutely. We talked to Dale, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we did a little interview with him as well. Um, so yeah, just if you want to like see more from the event or hear more from the bands, especially, yeah. um, a follow them. Yes, and B, we'll put that in the description, and then B, go watch all of our videos and um, go find this person who unsubscribed and hack into their phone and subscribe. Did you just go A then B then B again? I think you did. You did. It's A B C, bro. It's as easy as A B C. Oh, Look, boy. I can't even write my R's right. So, what are you gonna do? Mm. Um, okay, we're gonna take another break. <laughs> Oh um, but Dale, congratulations on Battle of the Bands. It was a fantastic night, and really it's awesome. been fantastic every year. It really has. Yeah. Like it is such a huge accomplishment, and I think that you have like the best resume. Um, so you know, everyone, if you need show needs or anything, hire Dale so that he can make a bunch of money and give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy to help promote and produce some shows. I mean, it's it, it's a blast. It's something. I mean, that that event was something that I did because I loved it. It was um, his baby. It was you know the idea started and 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 it picked up steam and it was so much fun. And that was the reason you know that was the reason that I kept pushing it was you know because it was just something I enjoyed and uh, and it was something that I think the community needed mm-hmm. and still needs and it's just a, a piece of of part of that solution. And I mean, because the whole point of the event was to promote local bands and and promote that Murfreesboro has a music scene yeah. of original stuff. Right. And you don't have to drive 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half through Nashville traffic to see somebody local right. that's really good. Mm-hmm. Like All six of those bands did a fantastic mm-hmm. job, and they're all right here in your back door if you're in Murfreesboro. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that was the point of the event. It, it, it's a competition, but it's really to promote local bands and and if you're not local, go to your own battle of the bands in yeah. town. And if there yeah. isn't one, start one. Hit up Dale. Dale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be right back with segment number three. What's going on, guys? It's David here from Successfully Unsigned. We're having a ton of fun. Real quick, I just want to thank everybody for the support that you guys have given us over the past year. We've had a blast. We would love for you to see more of our content. To do that, you can definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also check us out on TikTok and Instagram. Another way you can support us is by following the link in the description to donate to the podcast. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back. Too successfully unsigned. <laughs> what was that pause? It was a dramatic pause. Okay, dun, so that dun, the people dun. can get back. We're us. like we're on the edge of their seats now. I mean, we yeah. had we had a really uh, intense, intense, yeah, discussion. Segment. Yeah, well, now we're gonna go to something else. Um, so we're just gonna talk about some current events that at this point probably aren't quite as current, but nonetheless, I feel important. like it's still something to talk about. And uh, I kind of like want to hear everyone's opinions on it. What happened? Oh, okay. So at the end of January, when Universal Music Group, UMG, failed to negotiate a new licensing deal with TikTok, it removed its entire music catalog from the app. Just like that, thousands of videos featuring music by artists like Drake, Taylor Swift, and Bad Bunny were suddenly silent. I am sorry. Why are you putting Bad Bunny with Taylor Swift and Drake? Also, dude, you're cheating. You're reading this right now. There's no stress involved. (laughs) Anyway, um, so basically they made this decision because I guess TikTok offered to pay only a fraction of the rate that other social platforms offer. Uh, For its part, TikTok said that Universal was putting their own greed above the interests of their artists and songwriters. Um, So basically 
Well, I, I actually, I don't know. This is an article by Vox. So Vox, don't come for us for plagiarizing. Um, but Jack An- An- Antonoff, which is like a very big producer, I think, mm-hmm. in the music industry, like works with Lana, works with Lana, I, <laughs> other people that I don't know. Um, that I do know. I th- I feel like maybe Taylor, but I could be wrong. Um, he said, I think it's I think it's backwards. <laughs> At the very least, we should have known. So I guess they kind of just, I do remember hearing about it and they were like, yeah, so this is going to happen in like three days. So I wonder if that's when all the artists found out as well. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, he is a producer. He won producer of the year at the Grammys. He said, you got a whole industry being like, you've got to do everything. You've got to do everything. And here's where you've got to do it on TikTok. And then one day it's like poof, which is very true. Like labels are hardcore pushing artists to be like, you need to be on top of your TikTok." Because the way that the music industry has been affected by TikTok is literally insane. There could be a whole podcast period, like multiple episodes dedicated to talking about how TikTok and the music industry coexist. Um, But also like this is really affecting obviously people who are content creators. So it's affecting people who are content creators because especially like dancers on TikTok, I mean, like if you're making your living through that, all of your videos just got muted. It even affected a huge creator named Patrick Glover (laughs) whose videos had like, no, but for real, I actually was really mad because there was this video where I worked on this horse, like carousel horse in my house and I had a Lana song in it and it's completely muted and I had a voiceover with it. And so for some of my videos, I can replace the sound and it'll keep my like, video footage in it but if i did a voiceover with it my voiceover is gone Mm. and so just different things like that like and obviously like i was very upset about that but i'm a very 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 small small account whereas there's some people who are like 90 percent of my videos just got muted and this is also a really big deal because artists on tiktok who have blown up on tiktok like we said labels are pushing this then if any artists I saw on Instagram, there was this small artist who um, is under Universal and he's like, my music was doing so well in China, I think. And it now just like, it was blowing up and going viral over there. And now all of those videos are muted. And now my music is not being promoted. And like, that's affecting his career. And so I think it's trying to be framed as like, oh, well, you know, this is for the artists. We're trying to get more money for the artists. And like, it's all, you know, we're fighting for the artists, da, da, da. Y'all be so for real. This is all about the corporation. This is all about the labels. Like no one cares about the artists. Okay. As in the big, the big companies. I care about the artists, obviously. You know, we're here on successfully unsigned and, you know, we, we, we do promote you know, if you're if you're an artist and you want to be signed, go for it. But do be careful what you're signing into. Because, exactly. Because it is it is a money industry, right? And yep. yep. You know the the <laughs> the bigger the label, the more likely it is that your personal well being is is less important than your financial um, input into what they are because they're they're there to make money. Oh, hundred percent. Point and 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 hopefully as as an artist, you're making money. Yeah. Um. It's meant to be a, a symbiotic relationship, although please, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> be careful what you sign. Always, always, always be careful what you sign. And hire a lawyer. <laughs> hire a lawyer. Yeah, lawyer. yeah. Well, and so uh, activist and writer Corey Doctorow told, I don't know. He said um, that companies like TikTok don't have to care about the disruption because their users, because they caught. don't have to care about the disruption they cause their users. Um, He describes this uh, phrase that he uses that I'm not going to say. He describes it as a process that digital platforms use to lure customers in, giving them goods or an experience they can't find anywhere else, only to make it worse for them down the line in order to better serve their business partners. I think that calculus... I think that the calculus that TikTok is making is that they would rather inflict pain on their customers than on their shareholders. Honestly, mm. I personally think, mm. and I, you know, we can, obvi- we'll discuss a little bit more about it. But I think both 
companies are in the wrong. Like, it's really just not. None of this was necessary. I'm sure both sides are fighting for money. I, I don't yeah. know the the inner workings of what's going on. I've I have been preoccupied with other things uh, other than and then really keeping up with the all the news updates on on the TikTok situation. But knowing the size and knowing and, and size doesn't necessarily mean you know lack of interest. But when you get to be a giant thing, it's it's easy for that to happen because there's so many people mm-hmm. and so many different perspectives and it's not as personal. Yeah. Um, but so, I, so I don't want to say that size alone is the only factor and, Oh, they're all out for money, but I, I feel like they're probably both out for money. Yeah. I think it's like for every song, like if your song is featured on a TikTok video, it's like three cents you get paid for it. Is that so, more or less than Spotify? That's way more. Three cents? You get three cents for a TikTok. It's like point zero three or something. Well, so that's okay. that's three tenths. It's something like that. Three hundredths. Three hundredths. I mean, it's it's way more than Spotify. Spotify. Are you kidding me? Zero, Spotify zero, takes everything. I think. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, so if but if you get if you let your if somebody uses your song in a thousand videos, you get thirty cents. Pretty hmm. much is what that accumulates to. <laughs> wow. So hey, I got a song I'm out sorry, there. Thirty dollars, thirty. I can't move. Both, both of us got thirty dollars. Both of us got songs out there. Do us a favor and do thirty videos each. Yeah, thirty videos of our songs. <laughs> and so it's like, Patrick, you're first. It's tough because artists, I can see, like bigger artists are probably not affected. The artists that are just starting to kind of crack, exactly the you know right the precipice of their career they're the ones really affected exactly and that's where yeah where i'm like okay so sure taylor swift is gonna be for this because she wants you know more money out of her songs being on tiktok Mm -hmm. and she did the same thing with spotify now obviously this is not just her where on spotify i think it was mostly just her um but use title but i think uh, do you use title? No, exactly. <laughs> That's a, yeah. Fifty dollars a month. It's insane. It's fifty dollars a month. Is it's it really? A lot. It's, <gasps> we're gonna look up. I don't I'm think gonna, it's that much. It's oh a my lot. Goodness. But it is. I'm it, sorry. You, the artists do get paid more. Yes. Uh, their crediting system for like art, like credits of like who the instrumentalists were, producers, engineers is generally better. Um, also, you're getting you know much better quality. Yeah. Uh, uh, so title heard. title streams that are lossless. I, I don't know if they're using codex still to achieve that i need to look into that i know it's spotify the, uses og vorbis which is a lossy codec kind of like mp3 i don't but, even know the words you're saying right now how much is it okay i lied it's 20 dollars a month 20 okay okay i mean that's, yeah that, that's a decent amount but you get mm-hmm. good quality stuff <laughs> if you're artists, in the military it's artists. over 12 oh responders, okay 12 yeah but when they first started, dude, it was insane. Like, it was like $30 a month. Wow. Um. Yeah. So, I, but going back to your point, like, yeah, artists like Lana, Ariana, Taylor, Drake, like, it on for them, I would say, yeah, this is, like, probably a good thing. I just saw something about, like, I, Kim Petras apparently is defending it. And I'm just like, no offense, but please sit down and be quiet. Like, you're fine with the amount of money y'all have. Whereas, like I said, the artist on Instagram that I was talking, that I saw where he's like, my music was blowing up on TikTok, and now it's all been taken away and I don't have any say in it. And it's like, that really stinks for the small artists that are under universal. But well, it's, it's, I, let's keep going before I say, no, it's, it's like a mix. Like I'm, I'm kind of seeing both sides because yeah. I, I see from like the creator, like the content yeah. creator on, on TikTok, I can see that, but it's also if an, I feel like it's, it just goes back to, we don't really view music like we view other f- mediums like books or mm-hmm. art. Like there are paintings sitting in a gala right now that are worth thousands of dollars, you know, that, 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 we treat so much differently than, than a work of art music. You mm-hmm. know, like, yeah. And it's just, I feel like we're, we're getting to a point as a culture where we just kind of take it for granted. It's like, Oh, it's going to be there. It's we completely forget how it came to be. Mm-hmm. And I, although I do feel 
bad for the creators on TikTok. I also feel for the artists who put in the time and the effort to create something that's just so easily being taken and like thrown in a video. Like I, I see on both sides because you want to know that whatever is being used is being you're being compensated for that fairly. Yeah. So I, I do see yeah. that perspective as well. Yeah, for sure. But I, like th- that affects, like I said, the artist that's like really trying to get up there, mm-hmm. you know, and all of a sudden someone's using your song and something and they're not paying you for it. And you're, you're still trying to get known or you're, maybe you're just getting known. Like, but these bigger artists, they don't, they're not really affected by this. You know, yeah. small point to, to all you small, smaller artists out there. And this is something that I need to, chase myself uh, i haven't haven't dug into it personally in my own music yet um but if you have if you have your songs recorded and you're you're putting them out there on spotify and apple music and whatever really really consider trying to push for internet radio as well obviously you want it on spotify and apple music but try to get it on internet radio whether that's pandora or iheart or Sirius XM, or places like that. Because even though that has a totally different audience, it has a totally different audience. Go for that. But also, they pay much better than yeah. Spotify and Apple Music. Um, I know people who make, you know, their entire livings basically off of Pandora. Hmm. Because it I pays... Not, I did not know all that. It pays yeah. a lot of money, especially if your music uh, leans towards those crowds. Yeah. Right? Especially if your music leans towards the crowds that already use that platform don't try to force it in the wrong place i mean obviously put it up there get what you can get do what you can do push it promote it but not everybody's pushing for pandora not every everybody's pushing for iHeartRadio or sirius xm but sirius pays a lot of money that's smart yeah you know? i mean and like a lot of people do use sirius xm a mm-hmm. lot of people yeah. but that's a really I I did not yeah. know that. That's yeah. You guys really should get on that. Come on, and what's wrong with y'all? and just like Spotify, you know. I and in fact, I learned this today. I didn't know this. Um, you know, Spotify has Spotify for artists. Apple Music has uh, their own version of it. I forget what they call it. Right off, uh, Apple Artists or something like that. Yeah. Um, if you if you are trying to go say the Pandora route, they also have their own version. You know, Pandora Amp is what it's called. A M P Pandora Amp. You can do that. And I believe I heard Sirius XM owns and purchased Pandora now. So I know there's some yeah. link between those two things. Mm-hmm. So you may be able to make them work together. I I don't fully know because like I said, I just learned about that today. Um, but those are avenues you can you can push as well. So yeah. Well, that being said, first off, I do want to reply to what you said. I do agree, and I do see both sides. I think it's just unfortunate that it's like what it really comes down to is the corporations wanting more money. Like it's even even if you want to argue that oh well these artists you know want more money or or like should be getting paid more, hundred percent agree. However, it's not really about that. It's not really about that. Like at least from my viewpoint. Um, now I'm not super educated on this, so because don't come for me, but because you know, every time, you know, it was the same way with CDs. Every time something is sold, if you're assigned to a label, the label's going to get their cut. Yeah. And I'm, and I, I don't know what the contracts look like for universal, I, I, but I, it, I, I bet. Is it just that TikTok's not wanting to play ball and come to the table and, and give them more? Yeah. I believe TikTok signed the same contracts with all the other major labels and universals yeah. the holdout literally yeah like the, if so, that's the case it's like tiktok has become one of the most popular like people find music through tiktok now exactly that yeah mm-hmm. and yeah. so it's like the leverage tiktok should have the leverage in that situation you would think yeah but i think Universal believes they have the leverage because TikToks w- wouldn't even have the cloud it has without their distribution of their music to yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. And so they're viewing it as, okay, you've gotten where you are because we've given you an avenue to do that by mm-hmm. licensing you our music. And so they feel like they have a right to charge more. And because of how much TikTok has exploded, I don't know. I mean, that not that business? Yeah, it is. Like yeah. at some point, you just have to look at it and go, "Is this is business, right? Like it's right. it's about making money. Are we making more money than we're losing?" Um, and 
I don't know. I don't know what the yeah. business model looks like for you for Universal. And I think there is a little bit of greed associated with it, but it's also that's the nature of business. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Especially when you're growing, TikTok is growing as much as it is. They're now saving money because they're making more. I will say this. I don't think TikTok's going to stand down. I think people still use that app so much and they don't really need in my, like, I do. I think, yeah, obviously the music helps and it's great and everything, but like people are, you know, doing covers or like there was a whole yeah. joke about, okay, well, I guess we'll just use Glee music now, or I guess we'll just <laughs> use this like copyright free music. And it like, is this like, or create bouncy? our own. I don't yeah. know. Okay. So that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Actually, if, if you are an artist and you are unsigned or you're not signed to UMG, whatever, and you're a smaller artist, this is your time. True. This is your True. time. I am so serious. Like, this is literally an opportunity to, uh, well, now it's been a few weeks, but like jump on the train and be like, hey, since you can't listen to Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande on here, then listen to my music and, or like, do you need a new artist who's similar to this to use for your TikTok dance? Here's my new song. Yeah. That's a banger. Da -da. Like there are literally this so the many yeah. things that you can do. Like this brings mm -hmm. so many opportunities for small artists who are not signed to UMG. It's unfortunate for the small artists who are signed to them. Right. But still like, this is a great opportunity. So at least take something good out of the bad or the uh, <laughs> like, so I don't know, which I'm talking to y'all too as well. Yep. Just yep. saying. Let's I make some videos you. after this, David. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, That's what we're working on. That means I got to stay. <laughs> well, guys, we have been into some deep topics tonight. Oh, I do. Oh, wait, I did want to say one more thing. I was talking about Trisha Paytas earlier. Shout out to Trisha Paytas because she buys all her music on iTunes. Still, wow. to this day. Yeah, she will buy all her music. So That's, if you want to be like Trisha Paytas, yeah. go buy all your music on iTunes or like go buy physical copies of yeah. your favorite artists, especially the smaller ones. The best way for you to support your favorite artists, especially the small ones, is to buy stuff. Buy. Literally yeah. buy yeah. it. Own yep. things. Streaming is yeah. great. And everybody appreciates streaming. Please do it. Don't don't stop. But if you buy stuff, that will directly contribute to what they're able to do. That directly contributes uh, so much more to them being able to record their next album, yeah, mm -hmm. or being able to do a show in your hometown, or to literally even just be able to spend time making new music that you get to enjoy. Yeah, and if you guys want us to do an episode on like music ownership versus licensing or something like that, oh, like, that's smart because I'm. Yeah, bad with that stuff. Yeah, that that could be a topic in the future. But let us know what you want to hear about. What would you like to hear us talk about next? Yeah, go watch our Battle of the Bands interviews. And thank you, Dale, for Battle of the Bands. And thank Where, you, Fred, for YouTube. Where can they find <laughs> us, guys? You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at successfully underscore unsigned. You can also find us on TikTok at unsigned podcast. Don't and we have a website. And we have a website. We have a website. We have a website. S U dot dash 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 S U dash podcast.com. Sign up to our email list. Give us money. Give us money. And <laughs> Stop as always, people. <laughs> subscribe to YouTube. Hit that like. Thank you. I love you guys. See you next time. <laughs>